Thank you very much. I really want to thank Seeper for pulling this together. Really, it's uh, it's important. And I only want to say a few things. Basically, to take the title of the uh, panel, call and just surround it with why what's next for Argentina matters to workers in the United States and elsewhere, to workers and the unions, because there are a lot of illustrations in the not distant past that remind us why. First of all, we're in the middle of this crisis in multilateralism, all these multilateral organizations that we have many long-standing criticisms and critiques of. Nonetheless, we know that we need to be in those spaces, and we need to reform them and change them with these critiques that we've had at the ready, and we've sometimes made some some progress, we've seen some, some openings. I think we'll hear more about that uh, from Ambassador Mahone. I will talk more about our partners in the labor movement in Argentina are so important to the strength of the labor movement in the whole hemisphere. And this is not a recent thing, it's a strong partnership we have with them. And it's a matter of having both a really live movement that can fill the streets and is always able to do that to turn out people to protest whether it's about austerity, wages, the IMF, proposals and programs, or they're really just mobilized for their own collective bargaining in a much more bread and butter way. But they are that kind of movement, but they're also an institution that is really important that we preserve it because we're seeing institutions, especially in South America, being attacked here. We know about it in our own experience, but what we're seeing in Brazil, we're seeing with similar things in Argentina. So for us, it's clear that we need to be supportive of, of changing the country back to the, the course it was on before. We heard about the high level of unionization, and that, that's the strongest testament we have to the, the ability to, to, to unionize and keep collective bargaining going. So I think our experience also the ILO bears this out. They are steady partners of the governing body of the ILO. I work every year as a U.S. workers representative on the Committee on Application of Standards, and they have always had a strong and professional presence there. To go back a little bit in time, I would remind people of something that was called the Free Trade Area of the Americas that was defeated in 2005, and that would not have happened without Argentine government, yes, but civil society and the labor movement was key in that, along with, at the time, Brazil and Uruguay and Venezuela and the globe defeated the FAA. This is something the U.S. labor movement and Larry Cohen was mentioned already very clear about stopping that. But we couldn't have done it without strong partnerships and collaborations and changes in the Argentine labor movement that opened it up more to other parts of civil society, that made it more about community and organizations that were not just about the workplace. So that, that was really important. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is the, the G20, which I'll leave for an expert on the panel to talk about that. But I think it's clear that in the midst of the crisis in 2008, and because of that, the 2009 G20, there was an opening gesture made to bring the ILO into that process and to make proposals and programs that have to do with employment. It hasn't been adopted, but every year we've been there pressing on those openings, sometimes making a little bit of progress. Having gone the last two years, personally, I can tell you, especially because of the US government, even even modest attempts to get the right kind of language in there have been fought against by the United States government. And not too long ago, we always had the Argentine government very strong in supporting the potential that we could use those spaces to do. So these aren't our spaces, but we have to take advantage of the opportunity and push to make them more like our spaces. I think that the, um, the, the other issue we'll talk about today is debt, and the Argentina has a vast history of that. Debt for what? When did it start? It's a long history, but I think that you know, debt doesn't always have to be bad, but with debt and agreements made to the multinational, multilateral organizations basically undermine sovereignty, undermine domestic policy space, this is where we really have to get people to understand. And one, people will talk about Argentina today, but one clear illustration from Greece in the last several years was, well, we need to take something away from somebody to pay for this debt. They do. Let's go after collective bargaining. They did it in Greece and then other places in Europe for certain countries, this became sort of a, a model. So I think it's really important that we're here. I just want to explain why it's important to US workers. We're still very close with the Argentine unions and will be, so glad to see the panel here today.